So now let's take a look at this in another way. Uh, what does it look like when we demodulate our double sideband suppressed carrier signals? So at our, our receiver, we now have a case where we have taken our modulated message. So our modulated message has traveled some ways. We multiplied it by that second wave at our receiver. So we're here at our receiver. We multiplied it by that second wave. Notice it's at the exact same carrier frequency. We multiplied them together to get this E of T. And then we saw that if we apply the low pass filter, we can get our original message just multiplied by one half. So if we took a look at the whole system now, we have a transmitter and our transmitter takes a message. It multiplies it by a cosine wave at a carrier frequency, giving us a modulated message at carrier frequency FC. We pass it through what we assume to be a distortionless channel such that our message, our modulated message has no change when it reaches the receiver. It's still this message multiplied by this cosine wave at carrier frequency FC. Then at our receiver, we apply a second cosine wave at the same frequency, so the identical frequency, we multiply those together to modulate the modulated message, giving us this E of T. This modulated modulated message is passed through a low pass filter, and that low pass filter will allow us to recover our original message just having been multiplied by one half. So looking at this, first we have our message. It's contained within this bandwidth minus B to B. It does not contain our frequency, FC, it has a height of one. When we then have a modulated message, so once it's gone through this modulator at the receiver and we're passing it through the distortionless channel, we have reduced the message amplitude by one half and we have moved all of the message up into this FC, the carrier frequency. We no longer have any of the message down here in the base. Right, this was the base band. By our modulation process, we moved all of the message to plus and minus FC. At our receiver, we applied the second cosine wave at the identical frequency, the identical carrier frequency. By applying the second cosine wave, we've moved this uh, terms out so that now we have these quarter amplitude terms that are all the way out at plus and minus two FC but we have also forced some of the, the frequency components back down to our original baseband. And this is our original message contained in our original baseband, just at one half of the amplitude of that old message. And so by putting it through this final low pass filter, we're able to recover what the original message was with just one half of its amplitude. <clears throat> so, some things to note when you're doing this modulation and demodulation. First, make sure that you choose your carrier frequency so that it's larger than your message bandwidth. This means that, that you'll have no spectra overlap. And also, when you go to demodulate your message at the receiver, your demodulation cosine must be identical to the modulation cosine and you must have a distortionless channel. So this means that your demodulation cosine must have the exact same frequency, and in this case, the exact same phase, which we just assumed to be zero degrees. When you do modulation and demodulation this way, the demodulation process is called coherent detection or synchronous detection. For practical applications, you're typically going to want to choose your carrier frequency divided by the bandwidth to be much, much larger than one. If you do this, make some mistakes, a fast ways to get distortion in this process, the easiest ways to get distortion are to choose a bad carrier frequency. It's too low. You're going to get a bunch of overlapping spectra and you'll never be able to recover your original message. The other way to get a lot of distortion in the process that we just mentioned is to demodulate with a second cosine wave, which has a different carrier frequency, or if you add some extra phase. These are going to result in a lot of extra uh, distortion in your system.